I'd like first thank Banner Fro to host the event, and Mohammed gave an excellent talk. I will talk something called the simplest data pipeline. I try to make it as simple as possible, but yet there are some flexibility later on which can extend in certain cases. I work for a company called Think Big. Is part of Teradata, and we are a big data consultant company. So we sell our times, and uh, we based on pure open software. Teradata is a classic company, but Think Big is based on pure so pure open soft open source, and we are expecting expanding quite fast. I'm the second here in Stockholm. I joined the last uh, December. Now we have eight. And uh, to me, that uh, a big data pipe flow, there's something we can store the data, and we need to get the data from somewhere, and we need to process it, and we want to have some insight. From those data, start from the storage. How can we store it? There are lots of different solutions. For example, the S three. At least for personal use, it's. I'm not sure how much will it cost. Once I put the data there, they can charge me. So, at least for non personal usage, I don't want to put there. And for bigger companies, they also don't want to put there. For example, Amazon, they have a service to ingest data. Basically, they they deliver a truck there, and then pipe in your data center, suck all your data there, and then drive to Amazon's data center, then dump it there. But there, that's one way. Once you dump it there, you want to get it back, you can just download it from internet. Couple years. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a small elephant. We can create our Hadoop cluster to have the high availability. It's good, but takes some time to build it. It's not simple enough for me. So for me, the simplest is a file, and just store as a file. But there's a main drawback: what if that file is broken? What I my laptop is broken? What should I do? So there's a little bit more thing: GitHub. At a certain size, I can just put the data into the GitHub. And GitHub now they don't have a hard limitation on how big data you can put there. At least couple gigabyte is no problem. And if you want to have large, they have this called LFS, large file storage. And in that way, I can put it there. I can just git clone and have my own data, and it's high available. And I don't need to manage it. Okay, now get the data. I have the storage. Now I want to get the data. Where are those data? And there are many different solutions. For example, uh, our company open source is called Kylo, and it's good. And of course, in, if、uh, that solution is good, can fit for many different scenarios, it certainly will take some time, some resource to run. So, for some use case, might not be necessary. For example, there is one called air quality. Just the air quality and.
the easiest to get the data will be just right click and download the file and save as. And that one has one tiny limitation that how about I want run it again? Then I can need to click again there 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 then I run it. And I, I don't want to do that. I want everything to be automatic. Especially like this one, just only a few files. I can right click and download. How about when they are unlimited files? For example, this weather API. They have the history data can specify which year, which month, which day, and you can download their file. And that will not possible just by right click. So for me, the simplest solution is write something like this. A shell script, and from which city, which year, from certain month, and I can download it. But like those kind of solutions, they have a tiny problem. Sometimes it does not work, and sometimes it does work. For example, sometimes when I download, the file is half size. So for this, I tried a simple solution just to check the size. If it's not enough size, I just re-download it. So this script, I can run again, again, and again until all the data are downloaded and already downloaded the data will not be downloaded again and for something like a little bit more complex thing then need some kind of model based uh, crawler for example for Jenkins data how many know use Jenkins we know that Jenkins have some jobs which running, have some test case running. And how I, uh, for example, I want to say that for one test, one certain test case, how are they run during the whole history? How are the time difference? How many are succeeded? How many are failed? Are there any pattern over history? Are there any related to certain machine? And that's hard by just by Jenkins Web API. So I create a model based crawler, get all the data, then I can analyze. If I have time, we can later on have another event for that. Then we need to process the data. After get the data, we need to process it. And there's a library I really like, it's the Spark, because it's fast and flexible and I have four steps of doing data process first load it like Spark it can load it from different places the simplest one is file then a complex one could be this Hadoop S3 but the only difference is just that prefix the file name and other part is just the same so which means the solution can just extend it from simplest file to a complex cluster solution and after load the data some part I don't want then I fill it and some something I want to add it and I enrich it and after this step is done usually I store it into an intermediate storage like Avro or Paquet, it depends on whether you want to change the schema or just every time I can just revive it and store it again. That's all depends on the scenario. Now we have lots of data. And those data we can not just read it, okay, what's that 1010 is. So we need something to understand what the data is. 
So we need to have some insight. And this chart, some chart is really good to understand the data is. And this is a chart for the air quality in China. This data is from 2011 until 2016. And I aggregated the data how many hours are healthy and how many hours are not that healthy. And I want to create those kind of chart by few lines of code. And then uh, like this high chart, I want to get from some data frame. And for the name, I want to use in the air qualities. And then the y-axis is how many times or how many hours it happens on that air quality and ordered by quality and plotted into a pie chart and plotted. And this is a library I created and open source it called the Spark High Charts. It added the visualization on top of Spark. It can both done in this Zeppelin and also can be done in standalone Spark job. And it also can store in a file and share with different people. And in some case, we want to create a chart that's just one-to-one -one mapping from the, some tabular data to a chart. But in the, most of the case, we need some kind of aggregation because we cannot plot 1 million points onto a chart. It's basically impossible. So we need some aggregation. And I don't want to aggregate before I plot it. I want to just tell the system, okay, I want to plot it in this way, then you can aggregate it for me. So that's this, the philosophy of this Spark High Charts app. Yeah? You don't need to aggregate before you plot it. You get in just the tail. So you want to plot. Excuse me, what if the data sets are inverted? You need a certain aggregation way to. Do you push the aggregation down to like a bit, but like to Spark? Yeah, that's by Spark. Now there's a little bit more that we have this process and we want share, right? We, we love share. And for the storage of this file, if it's in GitHub, then it's automatically shared. And the ingest and the process, if we store the code, then this all the process is shared. And we also want to share the insight. Inside it could be just one number, whether it's true or false. It also can be a chart. A chart that have the, all the interactions, not only a, a, a static PNG file, but it's a live chart which you can click and have the value. And I want to show you a short demo. For example, this is a chart. I have some called enriched Spark data frame. How many are using Spark? Yeah, we have a few. And Spark is really nice. It's fast, flexible. You should use it. Like MapReduce is, uh, how to say that? I spend one minute to run Spark job. In MapReduce might take an hour. So can, you can have roughly have the feeling. I don't want to wait an hour to see what the result is. For example, I can execute it, and it's aggregate, and the directory is showing the result. And on the background, it feels like the name is quality. So I group by the quali uh, quality. And another access is the 
the number of count. And uh, those count, these are all spark functions. Nothing changed. And I can direct do it. And if I want to uh, plot in different chart, I just change a little bit here. If I change here to HTML, it can create uh, an HTML. Then we can just send with email. And that HTML with all the interactions. I have different charts, and do you want to see it or? For example, this is the day over a year, 365 days. I just plot it. But that's mine hard to see, right? I want to see the detail in the between. So I want to have a zoom function. Then I, I added here called the zoom type X. Uh, is it, can you see it? Good. And I added that one so I can zoom it. This is uh, called the air range chart, and the lowest value is the average of the air quality. It's uh, these uh, small particles. <coughs> and the, the maximum is the, this maximum over that day. Then this I can just plot it over different cities. Have anyone visited China before? Yes, Guangzhou. Uh -huh. Yeah, Guangzhou is here. And it uh, has the best air quality. <laughs> because it's in the south, and it has much more <coughs> rain than uh, the northern part. But that's just over cities. How about I want to see something a little bit more or a little bit different format? That one is good, but hard to tell that's what's the difference between different charts. But I just need to invert it. So it's much easier to see the difference. And the part I need to add is just here, I want inverted axis. <coughs> now we have all the data, and one chart has uh, one set of data. How about I want to get a little bit more detail? For example, Shanghai, I can click in to drill in more to each month. Seems okay. This uh, this month is August, I believe, and that has the best air quality from average 26, and that's roughly the Stockholm's air quality 26 usually. And there are certain uh, months, just it was over 100 in here in Stockholm. Because it's a dry season and the winter tire and it just goes up and no raining. And here the eight months I can click in to see okay, are there any patterns? But that's quite hard to see. There is no basically no pattern. But on months very base there is a pattern. So certain months they have better air quality, certain months they don't. And the way I plotted, okay, I just first this line, I want to plot based on the site, which site, and the low is the average, and the high is the maximum, and ordered by the maximum. 
and then I drill down to mount the same with the and then drill down to the day again and here I have not uh, aggregated any data in so it's basically just when I execute it and run again and again so it's kind of create many charts I can execute it will take some while because it's kind of tree structure it need to get all the data if there are five cities and each city have 12 months so it's 60 60 then multiply it in 31 days so you can see how many <laughs> time you need executed to get this chart we can let it execute and it will take around one minute something and this is a box plot from the medium to the one quarter of the air quality and the third quarter and this is maximum and this is lower and we can plot it into different series over year for different cities but that's uh, also quite hard to see the pattern how about we see in this way so this is a for area chart and it's a stack and from each year and up to year and this is the number of hours reported why there are less hours because they are just start collecting and here is like almost have completed data set and it's quite interesting to me that I always complain about air quality I think it's getting worse but from this data I see and this is data is uh, published by US Embassy in China and this is another way of project that uh, how many hours that unhealthy air quality over the year seems pretty clear that it's getting a little bit better <coughs> Have some day similar with Stockholm. How many sensors do you have for city? There are five cities, and each city is they install a sensor into the embassy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, because that's published by the embassy. So they only, they only care about themselves, right? <laughs> and this is the number of hours of healthy over a year. And healthy means this PM 2.5 is less than 50. And this is air quality in Beijing during the week and this is from Monday to Sunday and this is hours from midnight we can see quite a clear pattern the air quality is uh, worse at the night time or the daytime and in the weekend it's even worse so it's quite interesting why it's possible like the people like enjoy weekend have barbecues and so on <laughs> just like here in, in Sweden in the summertime people just barbecue in the whole weekend and uh, this is just uh, based on the air quality data just one data set so it's a one time series 
and I didn't do any machine learning thing because I'm not good at math. I just want to see how the pattern is over time. And but I also collected the weather data. It's not only the temperature, but also weather raining, weather snowing, and the wind and different things. But I have not have time to do analyze it. If anyone interested, we can cooperate together. And in all of these simplest data flow. I don't want to build it over and over again. And it goes to one line of code using Docker. I create a Docker image called the Zeppelin high charts. And it includes those uh, tools I want to use. For example, I using Git to store the data. So every time I just uh, Download the data, and I have a complete set. And every time I just download our my code on the GitHub, and I have it there. And I have this uh, like CURL try to download data, and have this Zeppelin to visually plot it, and have that high charts included. And uh, the, by the way, the high charts have due license. Basically, mean for your personal use, you are free. And if you want to use it for commercial case, then you need to buy from high charts. It's developed by a Norwegian guy, and they have a company. And it's pretty cheap, like $600 for one license. And you can deploy it, and everybody can use it. Any questions? Yes. In a data set, you have something called beyond index. It means that the sounds are just they don't want to record anymore. What is what's beyond index? The, the, the are definition that uh, between 0 and 50 is healthy, between 50 to 100 is moderate, between 100 and I don't remember exactly, it's called unhealthy for sensitive people and up to a certain range is called beyond index. Yeah, that's the definition. So it means that it doesn't have a justification in essence. Yeah, that is one class. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but basically you can treat it as as one class, right? Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Sorry, I'm uh, just curious. Yeah. Uh, you said that the charger is better than S3, for example, in the case. S3 is uh, charged by the by the amount of you use. Every time you use it, you need to pay it. But it's cheap as hell. No? <laughs> <laughs> they are called this. Amazon is called fail cheap and succeed, succeed expensive. Which means if you are not a success, you can just spend a little bit of money. Once you are succeeded, you need to pay a lot of money to them. And it's one way, so that's I that's what I don't like. The reason I'm asking, I, I just was thinking, what happens if you put one hundred gigabytes to it? Yeah, that's a <laughs> <You're> gonna <laughs> receive a call. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think like when 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 gigabytes is okay, especially you using this uh, Git GitHub LFS large file system. That's no problem. But if you want this over a certain limit, either you can choose like Azure or S3 or you build your own cluster. How big is your GitHub? 
I have a couple of gigabytes uh, rep also. So, uh, which means that's okay for GitHub. I have not received a call yet. <laughs> Uh, is, is uh, Python system is just uh, storing all files or you storing the code that you can use it to convert? Maybe that is very small. GitHub LFS is another extra package you can install, and after install, then you can get that feature. Yeah. I it does not have to be broad, but usually it's for the larger file system. Otherwise, you don't necessarily need to use it. Yeah? Yeah, that's called Using Spark High Charts. Yeah, it does. And it's open sourced. Yes. Does it support Jupyter or Jupyter Notebooks? I have studied the two. Libraries, one is Jupyter, and the other is called Scala Notebooks. For both, in order to add that function, then I need to have a pull request to their call. And I have not managed to create that yet. And for Zeppelin, it's pretty easy. I also try to add to Zeppelin standard distribution. But for the license issue, because this high charts is due license, and the Zeppelin will not accept it, because they want to have an Apache license. <laughs> By the way, I have some cups for the person who asks questions. <laughs> okay, I get one. <laughs> You, you don't need to have it. I, I have a few more, a few more. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want it. <laughs> yeah, then, thanks. If you have time, yeah, you can just go there and check this Spark High Charts or use this one, this doc container. I will put the link in the Meetup event, you know. And this slide is, is on GitHub. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, free storage and the free web operation. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Really interesting approach in uh, integrating with the yeah with the notebooks. Yeah, yeah. You want? I like it. I will take a look at it. I think that would help a lot.